How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern. 1 p.m. on Saturday with Jim Valley. And Sundays, 6 p.m. Eastern with me. I'm here. And we have probably one of the busiest pro wrestling weekends that I can remember in, in, in current times. Holy moly, a lot of stuff going on. I say this every week, and then I remind you I say it every week after I say it. But we have a tremendous lineup of pro wrestling starting in about an hour. Uh, right? 7 o'clock? 8 o'clock? What time is the show start? 7 o'clock. We got NXT that's going on as we speak. Clash at the Castle was yesterday, and what a fun show. A lot of fun that show was. Not without its problems. I'm going to have Matt Ryan in in uh, the next segment to hang out with me and talk about this. But he brought up a really good point. He summarized this match, the main event, perfectly. And I'm going to let him do that when we come back from break. But, you know, Cast at the Castle, I, Castle, I thought it was a great show. We got all out today. And uh, a lot of stuff I'm anticipating after this show for AEW. A lot of positivity here. Tony Khan was on with Dave and Garrett last night. And, you know, he kind of previewed what he's thinking of. He knows that this is a big moment for them going into the fourth quarter. So we're going to talk about that. But expect a lot of stuff tonight. And I also want to know from you guys. Did you think Castle the Castle has a chance of being the show of the weekend? I don't know. I You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that decision up for Monday. I think AEW has something planned for tonight. I think AEW has something unbelievable to present to, to the crowd in, in Chicago and to us at home. Uh, so we're going to go into that and a whole lot more here when we come back. Also, some news coming out of yesterday's show. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian here. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian here. I had to sneeze that whole entire first segment, and I don't know the words that I made up. <laughs> I think I, I, I called it Clash at the uh, Clashal. You, you said Clashal a few times. I said yeah, Clashal cla a few you... times, yeah. The, you know what? This is this is uh, Broadcasting 101. <laughs> Have a mute button and sneeze rather than trying to hold it. And Matt Ryan joining me today from Catalyst Wrestling. What's going on, man? Hello. Nothing much, man. Excited, excited, excited. A big weekend for pro wrestling. Not as big as Sunday, September 18th, CatalystWrestling.com. But, there you, go. you know, it'll be uh, – it's a great card. You know, NXT going on now. Clash at the Castle was fantastic yesterday. And I'm excited to watch all out tonight and see how uh, AEW counter punches. I have a lot of I have a lot of uh, questions for the audience, and of course, I have a lot of questions for you also about tonight's All Out show that's starting very very soon. So I want to get through this. Let's talk about this clash at the castle. This was their return to a stadium in the UK in over thirty years, thirty years on the dot, right? Nineteen ninety two, SummerSlam, yep. nineteen ninety two. Uh, so they were they were going up against a very much a remembered show from that era of pro wrestling. What do you remember from that show? I remember the VHS of that show. I want to say I watched it at a bar at an American <laughs> Legion Hall. Yes, I was three years old at the you time. Know, but but people don't realize, okay? Yeah. You are you are a, a dirtbag from New York. <laughs> if you have not enjoyed wrestling in the early 90s at, a, at an American Legion or a Knights of Columbus Hall. My you first know, did you really live in New York? My first WrestleMania that I can recall was WrestleMania 8, and I remember it being on a, t a bar TV. It is either that or a fabricated dream that has kind of purported itself into reality. But that speaks more. I got to talk to my shrink about that. But uh, <laughs> Clash at the Castle as opposed to SummerSlam 92, I feel like the main event delivered way more than the WWF championship match. Um, Brett. And Bulldog is a match that is hard to stand against. You know, any match really in SummerSlam history, except maybe Brett and Mr. Perfect. That one came close, I think, in terms of main, big time main events. It really met it met the answer. It was the finish we needed, not the finish we wanted. And that, that and was, you know what? I agree with you 100 percent on that. It, it 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 makes sense why they did it because they obviously have a plan, but. You know, it, you you don't get this opportunity too often to be in front of seventy thousand people with a tremendous hometown hero in the main event. 
not yeah. necessarily his hometown. We know he's not from Wales, right? We understand that, but still in the same country, <laughs> you know. So, uh, I, I, I think. I, 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 I what we're, we're, we'll talk about in the main event. Let, let's start off with Madcap Moss and the Street Profits versus Austin Theory and Alpha Academy. This kicked off the show. A lot of fun. Uh, right people won in this match. What did you think? I This was the only match on the card I missed for making lunch because I was like, oh, this, because I dipped in and out of the pregame show. Uh, because it just wasn't structured in a way. I was like, oh, when's the match going to happen? I missed it. But anytime you get that collection of guys in the ring together, it's going to be a good match. Um, I like that they're making Mad Cat Moss someone of value. Not a big fan of the name, but they're actually trying to turn Riddick Moss into the commodity that people have been talking about him being for, it feels like, three years at this point. He yeah. was on the Paul Heyman era of Raw. Um, someone that was getting a nice slow push and then ended up 24-7 champion uh, in 2020. So he's a guy that's been bounced around. It seems like he's found his footing a little bit more. That angle with Baron Corbin went really well for him. Um, and I think the Street Profit should have one of the tag titles. This is one of those Kobayashi Maru situations when you unify belts is that one team deserves a run with it but they might be a team much like the New Day to where they get the point where belts are kind of below them at this point, yeah. and we're just seeing them turn into one of the most bankable acts in the industry. Yeah, uh, I, I enjoyed this a lot. It was a lot of fun. We got Bianca Belair, Asuka, and Alexa Bliss versus Damage Control. Bailey, Io Sky, and Dakota Kai. You know, this was th this this was a fun match. Yeah. It was a hot opener. It yeah. gave each woman the chance to shine. Uh, Michael Cole popping the entire internet uh, when he made mention of the stable that Asuka, Io, and her sister Mio were in back in Japan. It's really interesting to see the new WWE. Like, there's not been long, large scale changes, there have been returns, but the biggest thing has been commentary. And Michael Cole being able to do the things that we've seen when he called matches in NXT or the UK Championship Tournament, there's a lot of opportunities for him to have more fun now and have a little less focus on hitting specific points at specific times or basically having to act as a narrator to what Vince McMahon is telling him in his ear. And I think that was one of the biggest boons about yesterday's show because you were able to feel all of the announcers being into it. Yes, uh, I agree with you. This was one of my favorite matches of the card, and it was the IC match between Gunther and Sheamus. Uh, the, it started off with Gunther and uh, Ludwig Kaiser reforming Imperium with Fabian Eichner prior to it. What's his name now? Giovanni Vinci, I believe. Giovanni Vinci, okay. Giovanni Vinci. So uh, Imperium has reunited, which is very cool. I think that's a very good act together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I was I, I was curious how invested not so much the live audience would be in this, but the actual uh, people watching at home, how into this match they would be. This was a rare big man main event style match. It was uh, it was an all Japan '90s match. Very it was yeah. to, they beat the crap quote, out of each other. Yeah, the quote Big E it was big meaty men slapping meat, yeah. and when you give either of these guys the chance to run with the ball, and you put that match in that stadium in that part of the world, it's gonna be match of the night because of all the things riding on it. Gunther and what he meant for European and British wrestling the last decade. Sheamus being one of the first modern imports from UK wrestling after a really rough period in the 90s and early 2000s, like him and Drew McIntyre and Wade Barrett really helped change a lot of minds in the national pro wrestling scene about wrestlers from the UK. And you just put that on them. And also that little bit of history of being the ultimate Grand Slam champion I think that everything rolling into this match made sense. It gave all the guys in this feud, uh, whether it's Ridge Holland or uh, 
the formerly known FKA Pete Dunn and and everybody on the Imperium side a chance to really shine. It gives Perium the reset it needed to bring everybody back. I like the way things are going with these guys and also a natural way to sh- turn Seamus babyface without Very. having to do something. It, it, that, that turn him in the ring. We saw it with Austin Brett in Survivor Series 96. Moments like that when they work and you're able to really find that point to where the audience can believe in you again as a babyface – there's nothing better than that. Yeah, I, I very, I was very impressed. I mean, I, I knew that they would probably go heavy on this, right? This was one of those matches that people were, a lot of people were speculating that you know that it should have been Nakamura in the stadium match for the title and winning the title like that. I think this was the way to do it, hundred percent. I this was a great example, and I think Sheamus needed this match. Yeah, no, he he needed it to. Uh, he had a great run with Drew in the battle. You know the. <laughs> Battle Dome. God. In the Battle uh, Dome. <laughs> yes, with uh, Terry Crews. Yeah. But in <laughs> in the Thunderdome era, uh, it was a really awesome thing. And seeing him kind of be revitalized in the era of Triple H, a guy who really believed in Sheamus for a long time, I think we're going to see a lot of great stuff out of him over the next couple of years. Yeah. Uh, just one more takeaway from here, right? Uh, we saw on Friday that Pete Dunne came out in a new outfit. In his old, old outfit, right? The Pete Dunn outfit. But he was still being called Butch. I think between turning Pete Dunn into this beloved baby face, which, I, I mean, naturally, he will be beloved. Uh, yeah. You've turned this entire crew over, and it's a fresh start for them. Mm-hmm. I, I, and and I, I think that's the key here. It's a total fresh start for this team. I think for Sheamus, you know, he's kind of reinvented himself. Uh, we do have a lot of matches to talk about. We're going to head on over to break, but when we come back, we're going to be talking about Liv Morgan and Shayna Baszler and everything else that happened on this card. Wrestling Observer Live, Adria Zarian. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live, Sunday edition. Big weekend for pro wrestling. All Out's about to start very soon. It's a very excited for weekend. this. It's a vascular ve- weekend of professional wrestling. Matt Ryan from Catalyst Wrestling, my... Uh, my my three out of the four times a month co-host, I guess, on the show. Listen, it's always great when you're on and people really enjoy your perspective on it. So listen, man, it's always fun having you on here. Um, it's always fun being here. Uh, shout out to everyone who likes me on the show and the preponderance of people who are tired of hearing my voice. But to that, I say Catalyst Wrestling, September 18th, CatalystWrestling.com. <laughs> there, there you go. SmackDown Women's Championship, Liv Morgan, Shayna Baszler. Liv Morgan in her sensational Sherry 92 best. She did a great homage to uh, Sherry's outfit from SummerSlam 92. Shayna Baszler, big, mean MMA star. You know, I, I thought they told a decent story here. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they tried, you know, the story was that Shayna, Shayna pretty much kicked her butt, right? This yeah. whole match. It's the old school baby face fighting from underneath and finding a way to win. The heel thinking they're too smart, get caught up, bing, bang, boom. It's Tommy Rich booking. It's the, pardon the phrase, white meat baby face booking. And sometimes you don't need to go too complicated with matches when you're just trying to tell that kind of story. And for me, it's building a case for Liv Morgan to hold on to the title a little bit longer, build up some of the antagonists, some of the heels on SmackDown. She was, also this was way, way better than SummerSlam. Uh, the booking yeah. and her positioning and how they told the story, it, they told a way better story with this match than they had done at SummerSlam. I, 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 know I wonder that, why. Yeah, I wonder why, right? Oh, that is very interesting. I wonder why. Um, the other, The other thing here is that Back around WrestleMania, uh, you know, the, the the concept that they had on paper was to team Shayna Baszler and Ronda Rousey together. Uh, I, I still want that to happen. I expect something to happen with that. Uh, I think keeping Ronda with Shayna would elevate Shayna more. And I think Shayna mm-hmm. should be elevated as a real threat in, this, in the women's division. She was one of the... I mean, she was an untouchable champion in NXT. How the the amount of over she was spoke volumes. Yeah, no, I I agree, and I think that if I was doing it, I would utilize the losses between the two of them, have them realize they're stronger together than they are apart, 
then they focus on Aaliyah and Raquel and they end up with the tag titles. Yeah. And then if one thing leads to another and Naomi and Sasha come back, then you have a ready-made main event feud that could co-main event Royal Rumble. You can have it be something to lead into Mania. You have a lot of different roads with that. And then you can turn it into a Shayna Ronda feud. If they lose that match, they drop yeah. the straps. It, there's, very built in. There's r- worse to go. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. very it's minute made. Yeah. Next match on the on uh, on the card: Edge and Rey Mysterio faces Judgment Day, with Dominic Mysterio on the side of Edge and Rey. So the entrance was really awesome for Edge. He came yeah. out with a lucha mask. I-, I thought it was really cool, different, right? And, and these are yeah, no, it was cool. The, and these are little things that you never would have seen years ago. Rey Mysterio is really the first one to add the variant outfits mm-hmm. to WWE to the level that he did, right? That it, it was a thing that you you popped. You know, Flair did it with the robes, obviously. You would have main event, alf, you know, tights and everything. But nobody had, like, the full different outfit. You know, think about it. It's marketing. How many yeah. of these toys are they, are they now going to sell of Edge? How many of those masks will they sell? You can market this. It's another thing to do, and I think it was it was really smart. That's a marketer in me speaking. But the match, however, could have been better in my opinion. Uh, it was less about the match, but it was the it was the story after the match that was the big part here. Dominic low blows or low kicks edge push beats up Ray, leaves the ring, loses both shoes. And walks up that the ramp. That was so weird. Well, didn't Ray give him the shoes, right? So I, guess. I guess. I guess, but like one shoe got stuck when he went for the low blow on Edge. Because Edge, I guess he was like, no, no, no. You're coming up too high and blocked it a little bit. And the shoe came off. And then he decided to take the second shoe off. Um, you know, this turn was going to happen months and months ago. Nearly six, seven months ago. They had originally started the thought of splitting these two. They teased it. For a while. And, uh, you know, they didn't go anywhere after that. So, time to do the split. What do you do? He's, he, you know, he is rocking the Eddie Mullet from like the 90s. Yeah. Does he just I, go into full, you're not my, di- you, you should have never been my dad mode? Or I don't know. It, it could, you could go down a bunch of different lanes with it. If you put him with the Judgment Day, you can say, you used me as a child to get, you know, get on TV, yeah, da, da, da. like all the stuff with him and Eddie, bring up all those unresolved issues, or he could tap into, you know, I am Eddie's son, you, you know, all this other stuff. There's so many different things you could do with it. I'm just glad it finally happened. Um, I don't, it'll be interesting if they turn him into Rhea Ripley's sub, uh, as the internet has been calling for for the past couple of weeks, yes. yeah, that that could be a thing that happens and would be probably a little hilarious. I uh, I very much enjoy when Rhea beats up the guy. <laughs> uh, I think it's I think it's because you know what's hysterical? She's not that. Wasn't tall. your favorite tag team Demolition? My uh, Demolition, the Road Warriors. Yeah. Uh, um, who was the uh, WCW knockoff of Demolition? Uh, the Powers of Pain were the also the WWE pain. knockoff yes. too. Uh, so, I, by the way, she's only five seven, but what a presence on her! Yeah, she she looks and acts like she's six six, and my lord, <laughs> and it the works. Internet, the the inter. I've never seen the internet. You know, go like this if you're listening on the radio. Kind of do the kawaii like anime pointing fingers for her. Uh, yeah, you know, just basically be complete weebs for for a worker before with just this ferocity yes uh so uh the match uh, how did you feel about the match it was okay it was fine i they it didn't do fun. anything mind-blowing but it, it was it, more it about the payoff uh, the ending yeah it was a hot tag team match it allowed finn and uh you know priest to show off their skills work against two legends and Edge did some cool stuff in the match. Ray was always Ray. And it was interesting how they played Dom in the match, utilizing him for the baby faces. And then just having that at the finish, I thought they were going to do a Strike Force Mania 5 or the <laughs> Dom pulls him off the pulls Edge off the ropes for yeah. the hot tag. You know, I th- I didn't I thought they would do it in match. I think they did it post match to kind of show that he's not a member of judgment day i i, yeah, think I guess it's kind so, of yeah. one of those 
Yeah. yeah. But and also also Edge and Ray won, you know, so you needed to you needed to do that part. Next match, a lot of people thought this could be the match of the night. Seth Rollins, Matt Riddle. The build for this was fantastic. Yeah. The match was fine. You know, they, they this was an okay match. It was fine. They told the story. Uh it Riddle just was not good enough. Yeah, he he came up short and he just wasn't able to meet it, it was John Jones DC. Like they they took that story and they ported it over. Uh Seth Rollins deserved the win in that situation. Uh didn't need the win, but deserved the win after what he's done to get, you know, people re like Cody Rhodes reestablished in the WWE and all the work he's been doing the last year and a half without being anywhere near the title picture consistently. Yeah. He's a top guy and he's been able to get a lot of talent over like what he did for Cesaro last year at WrestleMania was insane and well now the AEW's reaping the benefits of it. We'll talk about all out in the next segment, I believe. You think you but, think, you know, his entrance, you know, Seth Rollins is coming out there. He looks like a yeah. main event player, right? Like this guy yeah. is the epitome of what WWE wants in pro wrestlers. Go back 14 years to Tyler, Tyler Black. What was, I mean, I remember people saying like, this guy is going to be a top star in the business, but I don't think people realize what point he would actually get to. I think being exposed to TV level product, like remember he was on wrestling society X. That's how a lot of people got introduced to him outside of the Midwest. And that was what? 2003. No, Four, 2005. Five. It was five. early, you know, late, mid-2000s when that went down. Then he was in the Age of the Fall, learning under Jimmy Jacobs, and then just learning in Ring of Honor. And then I think NXT, when he made it to the, you know, made it to WWE, he learned all that. He sat under the right learning trees, and he said it himself. He really needed to learn. He was in trouble a lot early on in his yeah. run in FCW and in NXT, but he listened, he learned, he's developed and grown. Like, you can chart how great Seth Rollins has gotten over the last five or six years, ever since he became a single player, an individual worker in the WWE, the stuff he did with Joey Mercury and Jamie Noble, just all of that stuff, and he's really refined and developed the character. He was given, you know, chicken bleep with a few different yeah. things when he, right before the Thunderdome era, and he made the best of it. Yeah. And I think that his work over the last two years might be his best work. I agree with you. And the main event here, undisputed WWE Universal Championship, Roman Reigns, Drew McIntyre. You summed it up the best. Start with what you what you said early in the show. It was what was it? It was the right outcome. It's the, it was the finish we needed, not the finish we wanted. We yes. wanted to see Drew McIntyre back in the UK in front of sixty nine thousand people. First of all, nice, and then you get the win and you have that big moment. But they did. They made sure that Roman Reigns remained champion. It'll be interesting to see what they do on Raw. Uh, also, the inclusion of Tyson Fury is some nice breadcrumbs for a mega fight down the road, potentially at Wembley, maybe back at Principality. Uh, there's a lot of different things on the table, a lot of different ways they can go. But Roman Reigns needs to remain champion, and also Solo Sioka making his uh, so, WWE so, debut. Solo Sakai. Sakoa. Sorry. So, Sakoa. Solo Sakoa. So sorry. Uh, the third, the third of the Usos. Yes. Very interesting. You know what? I think it's a great call up. It's a very organic call up and he'll, yep. he'll, he'll do great with them. Very interesting card. I give this a B plus this match. I was into it. A lot of fun. I, I enjoyed the main event. I, I thought it was a great main event. I thought Drew should win. He didn't. And we'll find out what happens next. Guys, we're going to go to a quick break. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian, Sunday edition, all out Sunday. Joined by Matt Ryan here. We're going to be talking about the card that's going to be coming up in, in minutes. Mere moments. Call Sunday. your pay-per-view provider now. Call your pay-per-view provider. You know what I think of every time you say that? SummerSlam 91. <laughs> call your pay-per-view provider uh we got a big big card here huge card it is. yeah it's frank um, goodman-esque 
Yeah. Uh, by the way, Wrestling Observer Radio will have a nice detailed show for what you saw last night in Cardiff. That should be dropping very soon, or it should be up by now. Uh, they also have a great interview with Tony Khan. Garrett Gonzalez and Dave Meltzer had Tony Khan for about almost two hours. Wow. A lot of great insight in that interview with Tony. Definitely suggest you guys check it out as well. Let's start off with this card. 15 matches. One thing that I'm advising you guys, if you're listening to this live and you are in Chicago and you are going to the show, listen, I'm looking deep into your eyes right now on camera. <laughs> I cannot tell you, I cannot suggest any more than I have. Arrange your travel pickup from that building. If you're at the Now Arena, you're not in downtown Chicago. You're not at the United States. You are in the suburbs. Uh, there will not be enough Ubers and Lyfts and rideshare services for you. It is first come, first serve. And these guys don't want to work at 1230, 1 o'clock in the morning. It is a nightmare to get out of that building. Make sure you got a ride out. Make sure. I know. Do you, do you know how many people have arranged limos to wait there for them and pick them up? At least seventeen. I I would have I, I would have been on a bus. Tony from Observer rented a bus. That well, you got it. When I was in Chicago, I was in Chicago for Punk's return last year. You were at the United and, Center, though. Yeah, I was at the United Center. Yeah. But even then, like arranging an Uber back to my hotel Disaster. was a nightmare. nightmare it was nightmare. horrible. Like Chicago is a beautiful city. Worst transportation options I've ever had, and I live in New York, so well, we got I, every I might option. be a That's little spoiled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go through this card. I want to hit every single match here. The big surprise of a match, Tomohiro Ishii and Eddie Kingston in a singles match. All right, they're going to beat the crap out of each other. Freaking love it. Violent. Straight Violent violence. match. I'm excited for this. We're going to get Pac, Pac, and Kip Sabian for the AEW All-Atlantic Championship. All right, you know what? I think this is a good showing for Kip. I hope he does something that's going to highlight him a little bit. Very talented. I feel like they might do a title change here. I feel like, you know, that'll be the payoff for Kip coming back. There'll be some Falderon, some Skullduggery, and that will advance the storyline. I think that how he came back, you can't just do a one and done. And him coming back and losing in his first match may not do him as much service uh, as Pac keeping the title yeah. right now, especially if he could take it off him in a, in a little bit of a Skullduggerous way. We also got on the pre-show Hook versus Angela Parker for the FTW Championship. I That's think I got, I got, fun. you know, I may have seen, uh, gotten the Iggy on this. I, I think Action Bronson might be involved in this. All right. All Queens right. Queens is you, own. You've sold, you've sold the pay-per-view. Queens own. You've, so, you've sold the pre-show with the paper. You've sold the pay-per-view with a pre-show. Action Bronson. Shout out to Action Bronson. I'd love to have him on the show. I should, you know what? That I should reach out to Action Bronson. I can you get should. him in the studio. He's a, he's a Queens boy. He's a good kid from Flushing, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, he's he's from he's a Yankee fan though, which is I know weird. it's okay, it's all right. I'm, I'm I'll yeah. forgive him. Jericho Appreciation Society, Tay Mello and Sammy Guevara versus Ruby Soho and Ortiz for the AAA World Mixed Tag Team Championship. All right, you know this shows synergy with AAA. I think that's a positive mm -hmm. for them, right? Every match there's like four thousand title belts on this match on this card. Yeah. Think yeah, about how many title matches. It's so now a champion. It's a, so it's now, the second yeah. or biggest show yeah. of the year. Brian Danielson, Chris Jericho, Lionheart Chris Jericho, the American Dragon Brian Danielson in a singles match. I am so looking forward to this match. Chris Jericho's been working really good. Uh, Tony, in that interview with Dave and Garrett on WrestlingObserver.com, said that this is the best he has ever seen Chris Jericho. This version of Chris Jericho is the, the best that they've ever had in the company. You know, he's in great shape, and he's doing some really cool stuff. I'm looking forward to this match astronomically. Yeah, I like Jericho when he's playing it a little more straight and being uh, in the Lionheart persona. I'm not a big fan of the Pain Maker or some of the other stuff, like the Wizard stuff for fun. But this version of Jericho um, with something to lose or something to gain is a lot more interesting. And You don't like what we do in the Shadows, Jericho, where he's a wizard? <laughs> I drank the blood of some people. 
I'd 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 prefer now Matt I'm Berry over Chris. <laughs> if we can do a talent exchange and trade Chris yeah. Jericho for Matt Berry, I feel like AEW may win the weight ratings. You know what? I overall. think Matt Berry would be great in AEW. I would take Matt Berry in AEW. I drank yeah. the blood of some people, and those people were on drugs, and now I'm a wizard. Best line ever. And by the way, Jericho did that. He put that. He put that cap. He put the uh, the street cone on his head and did the bit. Fantastic. Brilliant, brilliant man, that Chris Jericho. He's going to uh, go somewhere in this business. I'm telling you. Uh, Jericho Danielson, uh, this is going to be a great match. Very much looking yeah, forward to this. Uh, we also got Tony Storm, Britt Baker, Jamie Hayter, and Sheeta for the uh, AEW Women's World Championship. This is a four-way. Originally, was going to be a singles match between Tony Storm and the, I guess, the current champion, right? Yeah, oh, I think it was going to be a singles Rosa. match straight up. Yeah, Thunder Rosa and Thunder Rosa. Uh, yeah. For the uh, so I, I mean, this is Tony's moment. I think it's a great moment to put the title on her, elevate her to that top positioning. I think her and Burt Baker could have some great matches. Jamie Hader's coming up, obviously. She does very well liked in that company. Uh, this is a good assembly of established AEW uh, people from the beginning and two new two new people in the division to kind of build it up. I got a moth in here. Or I could be oh, no. hallucinating it. Yeah. That... It's that episode of Sports Night all over again. <laughs> House of Black, Malachi Black, Brody King, and Buddy Matthews versus Darby Allen, Sting, and Miro in a six-man tag team match. We heard the rumors that Malachi Black was very unhappy. Uh, there was a report that said he requested his release. That was, I believe, uh, Raj Geary from Wrestling Inc. had put that out there. Uh Fightful Select put out a story saying that, yeah, there were some issues, but he, he believes they worked it out. You know, I love the act. I love House of Black. I, w I would love them to do more. Uh, I'm shocked that they didn't they didn't expand them in the trios tournament a little bit more. I would have loved to see them maybe get that title, but it's going to be a fun match. Obviously, it's going to be a, 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 a stunt match with Darby and Sting doing a lot of stuff. Miro being part of that weird group is is interesting to me. Yeah, I, I feel like something's going to make or break here with Miro because they've been trying to recruit him to the House of Black. Um, I like Miro as a character. I like him as a personality. I feel him as a solo act or if they bring back CJ Perry, the former Lana. Uh, him in the House of Black is kind of him sticking out in a bad way. I don't know how that would work. Um, him with Darby and Sting just kind of makes me want to see Miro in sting face paint. So I'm hoping that's uh that's something that happens tonight. If anybody yeah. out there in Chicago is listening, <laughs> I would love uh, Miro in, 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 in uh, yeah, you know what? I'm sure they are right now. They, they have nothing going on tonight. People working there. They definitely have downtime an hour before the show. Put some paint on Miro, please. Yeah. Jade Cargill, Athena for the women's TB uh, for the AW TBS championship. You know what? I think Jade should keep the title. Same. Yeah, I, I, I tr really believe it. I love, I, I love the things that Athena could do in that company. I think she's very talented, but I think this is the moment for Jade to keep being dominant. Jungle Boy and Christian, in a match that they spent a lot of time building, but I, I really, for whatever reason, I, I'm not super interested in this match. Because there's 90 million other things going on, and uh, if they had this match a month ago, it would be the it would be a main event, co-main event match, but yeah. they've had to, they have time in between pay-per-views, so it makes it hard. Wardlow and FTR versus Jay Lethal and the Motor City Machine Guns. Chris Sabin and Alex Shelley. Six-man tag team match. This will be a fantastic match. It's going to be uh, a fun time. Very, very fun match. You know, and again, sometimes you just got to put on these matches to get people on the card. And, and it lines up into being something that uh, could be a mind-blowing match. I, I think this is one of those. I think this is a good mm -hmm. match to have. Claudio. Wheeler Yuta versus Wheeler Yuta versus... Penta L Zero Zero Medio. There you go, thank you. Uh Ray Phoenix, Rush, Andrade, Roosh, Andrade, Dante Martin, and Turnbuckle Dan. The Joker. <laughs> Turnbuckle Dan. We don't know who he is. Who can Turnbuckle Dan be? It's gonna either be Adam Cole or MJF. I think MJF plays a role in this match or in the main event. I I I hope. Well, MJF, uh, listen, you either do it today or Wednesday, but tonight is the night to do it. You want yeah. you want people to talk about the show. You want people to go home 
and tweet about it. You want the buzz to be big. This is where you, when you do it. When you have yeah. uh, 200,000, close to 200,000 of the most uh, dedicated AEW fans tweeting about it and talking about it. Swerve in our glory and the acclaimed. I don't know if you put the title on the acclaimed. I absolutely love the act, but I, I, I don't know if this is the time. If... If you want to do it while the iron's hot, you do it now. But I think they're a tag team with a lot going for them in the long run. I think you strike yeah. while the iron's hot and you split up Swerve in Our Glory because I think they'll do better as singles. But if you want it on a tag team, you switch the belts tonight. Yeah. Ricky Starks Powerhouse Hobbs as well in a singles match. You got the Elite versus Hangman Page and the Dark Order. This is going to be a story within a story here with Hangman being part of the a dark order refusing to work with the Bucks. I'm I'm very curious to see what happens here. And the main event, John Moxley, CM Punk for the AEW World Championship. Give me your predictions for both these matches in uh in about a minute. Go. I think the Elite will win the six man titles. I think there's gonna be some something weird that happens in that match, but it sets up for them to win. I don't think Hangman turns heel or rejoins the Elite, but I think that this is gonna be a big point in that story. I would be surprised if the Dark Order won. Wouldn't be too surprised, but it would still be shocking enough because I would put my money on the Elite. Um, I think CM Punk turns heel tonight and wins the title back. I think it resets the character, turns Mox Moxley into the biggest baby face in wrestling and also plays off the Ace Steel stuff from Wednesday night. I think there's a lot of opportunities with a heel punk saying, I'm back, I'm here for money, I'm holding on to this title, I lost it once, I'm never going to lose it again. And also MJF could be the run-in saying, the only reason I'm back is to take that title off of you, not Moxley. A lot of fantastic matches tonight. A lot of great wrestling tonight. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition. We'll be right back here on Sports Byline after this. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian, all out about to begin. You know how you know how it's going to end, right, Matt? How, how's Ace it going to end? Ace Steel's going to come out. Punk's going to lose, and he's going to be like, "Listen, you're a winner. You're not a loser." And they're going to do the entirety of Chicago. <laughs> so they have to one up last yeah. yesterday's musical in musical close yeah. with the entirety of Chicago. They're just going to do the entire play. What is it? It runs about two hours. <laughs> They'll be there till two o'clock. Is there going to be an Tony... intermission? No, 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 not an intermission. There's no intermission. They're going to do it right after the show, and then Tony's going to do the scrum that's going to run till about seven o'clock in the morning, and everybody's going to miss their flights. <laughs> no, that's not the perfect way to end this weekend. This holiday I, weekend I feel here like... in the United States. I feel like there are much more ideal scenarios, but that's the one I kind of want to see because I want to wake up in the morning and just get these Ken Burns Civil War letter tweets from people. <laughs> Dearest mother, it is 3 a.m. Jade Cardgill has not come out for the <laughs> for her post-match interview yet. We are all scared. They have taken away the ice cream bars. Your dearest, David. David. <laughs> I would love to see that. Guys, Listen, a lot of fun this weekend. I've had a blast watching wrestling uh, yesterday. I, Brian Alvarez, I don't know if he's going to be he's going to be doing the show. I, I saw he took a little bit of a beating. I sent in the letter. I, I'll sub in for him if he needs me to. I don't know if he's going to recover after uh, what Filthy Tom did to him. He also took some stiff chops throughout that match. Ugh. A lot of fun this weekend, guys. This is it. We're wrapping up. Go and enjoy the show. Order the show. Support good wrestling, no matter what company it comes from. Catalyst Wrestling. Also, CatalystWrestling.com. Mm -hmm. Go check it September. out. And yes. In September, there's a pay-per-view. We'll see you all next week. We're out of time. <laughs> Take care.